This conference will now be recorded. So good evening. Good evening, Deepa. Why she is not opening? Yeah. So today, this is the second lecture on this topic: system of particles and rotational motion. The last day we just started with center of mass and then we completed the class. So what we'll do today, we'll learn the concept of center of mass in detail and we'll try to calculate center of mass for some representative systems. Okay. So let us start the class then. Okay. See last day we had defined what is center of mass center of mass of a body is a point where the whole mass of the body is supposed to be concentrated and this is actually thought to describe the translating motion of any rigid body see what was the necessity of defining center of mass etc i had briefly discussed last time that in case of rigid body rigid body it is actually made up of made up of large number of particle okay a large number of particles okay large number of particles so when you have large number of particles how to describe the motion how to describe the motion motion of such object actually in the previous chapters we had already done with using newton's laws of motion for the extended object or rigid object also but see the newton's law newton's laws of motion laws were derived for for only point mass only point mass okay only for point mass but rigid body actually contains a large number of particles right so what we can do is if we can describe like define center of mass what is center of mass a point in the object itself in the rigid body itself where the whole mass is concentrated that means if i have okay suppose i have an extended body like this and see i have to describe the motion of this body suppose it has total mass of m if suppose we we describe the center of mass at the center of this this suppose this is square at some central point the whole mass is situated or concentrated then it is easy to apply newton's laws of motion on this object at in fact whatever force you apply that will be actually applied to the center of mass then this whole object actually has been transformed into a point mass point object of the same mass okay this is see this is the physical significance of center of mass okay of an of this but now you have a point mass you can apply the newton's laws of motion so this was the fundamental idea 
So to describe translatory motion of a rigid body, this center of mass is assumed to be a point on the in the object within the object itself through which the whole like at which the whole mass is concentrated. So this is center of mass. Now see we started deriving some mathematical expression for the coordinate. See suppose this in this is a this is an extended object. It has the masses here, here, suppose there are four masses or maybe much more. Okay. So the center of center of mass has to be a like point point mass has to have some position. Okay. The point mass with respect to some coordinate system has it suppose it is two dimensional object then it will be having x y coordinate if it is if suppose there is a object linear object which is one dimensional object so they may have many number of particles like this okay so center of mass will be somewhere in between within this object itself so in that case only one coordinate x cm will be the center of mass coordinate so we'll see how to define for linear object or one dimensional object how to find out or how to define center of mass coordinate for three dimensional object how to define center of mass or find out center of mass calculate center of mass for discrete object like bodies of district district mass distribution and some cases there will be continuous mass distribution if if you see any object in this world any rigid body you take that has continuous mass distribution so for them how do we define center of mass coordinates okay look i have got a got two point objects m1 and m2 they are point objects so we have to find out for this suppose there is a two system particle like this okay Two system particle like this so i have to find out what where is the center of mass so mass has yeah these two masses are m1 and m2 respectively so what we have to do is actually we have to find out the position so since it is one dimensional object okay one dimensional case so let us let us take all those two particles on the x-axis situated at different positions like x1 for like position coordinate from the origin is x1 for mass m1 and that is x2 for mass m2 this is up to here so how to define center of mass for this system i have got the individual positions of the masses then let us say the center of mass is there in between somewhere in between this somewhere in between m1 and m2 so center of mass actually is defined as i'm writing xcm is defined as defined as x1 m1 plus x2 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 so this is called the center of mass coordinate of this two particle system okay so you can see that this this is actually can be termed as mass weighted mass weighted mean of positions mass weighted mean of x1 and x2 positions okay so this is the center of mass now look one interesting thing is <coughs> excuse me <coughs> interesting thing is if suppose these masses are equal in magnitude then this xcm will be x1 plus x2 whole into m divided by whole m c m on m so 2 m so you just strike this m off so what you get x1 plus x2 by 2 x1 
plus x2 divided by 2. So this is actually the mean position or the middle position of the distance between these two masses. Okay. So when the masses are equal in magnitude, then the center mass coordinate is exactly at the geometrical center of these two masses. Okay. Okay. So at the middle of these two like masses. So there is the center of mass. Okay. Now look, I have two particles over here. If I have if there are n number of particles n particles n such particles so how to write how to write center of mass coordinate xcm is equal to c m1 x1 you need to know the position of the particles all n particles you have to know you have to know the mass of all such particles uh, and then you have to in the numerator you have to write m1 x1 like this is called actually mass moment what is this called mass moment mass into distance is called mass moment m2 x2 like that it will go up to m n x n okay and in the denominator as you know there i was doing a1 plus m2 now i have to write i have to sum all the masses up right up to mn okay look this actually this is elaborate like uh, thing if you just in short notice and if you want to write that see there is a short notice n for summation you can write like this see i'll write m i and x i and i equal to 1 2 and what does this mean if i just break the summation if i just remove the summation then i have to write <coughs> see if i put a i is equal to 1 then m1 x1 if i put i is equal to 2 then m2 x2 so this is called summation over i i goes from 1 to n like that you have to read so in the denominator minute also i can write this i goes from 1 to n so here also if you put m is equal to like i is equal to 1 then m1 so since this summation sign is there you have to write plus and then again you have to put the other value just 2 then plus m2 so plus m3 like that it goes so this these are actually equivalent we are we have written in a short notation now this suppose this mass has see this sum of this mass is total mass capital m if that is the case then you can write mi xi i goes from 1 to n divided by capital m so capital m i have taken this summation of all the masses to be the capital m okay so this is the simple notation and this is for one dimensional object now suppose my object is a rigid body is not one dimension and there are there are suppose i i take a three dimensional or two dimensional object of three masses like i have three masses but not in a not in a straight line they are in a plane so i have three masses m2 this is m1 this is m3 i have three masses okay but they are not in straight line they are in plane okay and see i have noted down the position coordinates with respect to two dimensional cartesian coordinates see this this guy has a this c y coordinate up to y1 here x coordinate up to here x1 like that this has x3 and this is y3 okay and this is you know this is x2 and this is y2 like that okay 
so I have noted down all these position coordinates with respect to this origin. Okay. Now look in this case how to find out the center of mass coordinate. Actually, center of mass coordinate you can find out. See, similar. See, I just see this two dimensional. That is fine, but we know for one dimension. I'll just treat each dimension as one dimension. That's all. You write the center of mass coordinate like x coordinate. You write how you know m1, x1 plus m2, x2, then plus m3, x3 divided by m1 plus m2 plus m3 okay now you have got another coordinate also then center of mass also will be having two coordinates not only single coordinate so you have to write ycm also so in the similar manner you can write m1 y1 plus m2 y2 plus m3 y3 divided by m1 plus m2 plus m3 okay this is how if you have n number of such po such particles okay n number then you have to go with n up to n coordinates okay like this here if you have n numbers okay you can go up to n numbers of such mass and their respective coordinates see you can write this as in the same in the same short notation manner you can write summation over m i y i so i goes from one to n okay like that you can write if you have if you have n number of particles okay let us first complete this with three itself so see in this case if suppose m1 m2 and m3 are of equal mass of equal mass m then what we get as the coordinate x m you look here so this all m will go here will be x1 plus x2 plus x3 divided by 3 and y c m will be y1 plus y2 plus y3 divided by 3 like that okay so you can see if the masses are equal in magnitude then center of mass is actually situated at the centroid of the triangle made by all these three masses okay so here you will get at the centroid xcm and ycm you will get the center of mass for these three objects if they are equal in magnitude then whatever triangle they make center of mass will be the point of centroid made by uh, centroid of the triangle made by these three masses okay now so, see we can extend this thing for three dimensional objects are itself see from here itself i can write a three dimension case if i have a three dimensional object then that will have three coordinates right so three coordinates ycm and zcm okay like that it will be so xcm as you know x1 y1 sorry x1 m1 plus x2 m2 like that it goes up to n and here it goes even up to n like that okay mn so similarly for y also you can find out the coordinates see y1 m1 plus y2 m2 plus suppose it is done for n number of particles then yn mn here also i can write xn mn okay so in the denominator you get m1 plus m2 plus dot dot m n okay similar to this you will get here z1 m1 plus z2 m2 okay like that it goes up to z n m n 
okay divided by here m1 plus m2 and goes up to mn so if i write in short notation you know this can be written as summation over mi xi here i goes from 1 to n divided by capital m because i'm taking the summation of okay let us let us write that okay this is the one so this is your x coordinate here okay so y coordinate similarly it will be the mi y i divided by capital m and here it will be m i z i by this okay so this is how you can extend the same formula for n number of objects for n dimension whatever dimension it is you can do that now look if suppose we think that we are going to write down the center of mass coordinate in terms of vector suppose it has center of mass over here okay so the position vector is this r if this position vector is capital r cm and all of them are ha having position vector suppose this is r2 this is r1 this is having position vector r3 so how to write the center of mass coordinate in terms of vector is see this can be written as see i can write this as i cap x cm plus j cap y cm okay plus k cap z cm so cm z cm x cm y cm you can write this terms whatever you know from here you look i'll just go to the next page maybe so look this can be written as see i cap you, you know then you get mi xi okay plus you know this m will be down so again j cap by capital m then it goes mi y i k cap m down this goes m i z i okay so look what i can do is i can just take the common this thing one over this and look m i are common m i are common so i, I can write this is i x i plus i cap j cap y i plus k cap z i okay the summation for all of them are there all right so you look this i can write so this is actually uh i was so this is the actual position coordinate of individual if i just write i is equal to for one see i'll just write for one you can find out see for one it will be c m1 and this is x1 i cap plus y1 j cap and then z1 k cap so this you can write at least you can write how you can write is m1 r1 you can write like this okay where r1 is this whole okay so if this goes for all of them and that there, there are n particles so how you can write is look here you you will be able to write this as mi ri vector and divided by capital m okay so this is how center mass can be written in terms of vector notation also in some if some some problems are there where the the position coordinates of the particles are given then like in terms of position coordinates are given in terms of position vectors okay not coordinates position vectors then you can write m1 r1 so this if i break you will get m1 r1 vector plus m2 r2 vector so all of them position vectors of all of them as i was showing you here see this has position vector r2 this has position vector uh, r1 this first guy here 
okay so i'll just clean it look here if this is having r1 position vector this has r2 position vector okay and this has this one has r3 position vector okay and the center of mass has here rcm position vector okay all right so this is how you can write okay so i'll write it in the previous slide itself so vector notation you can write r capital cm is equal to summation over i m r i vector divided by total mass okay or you can write in terms of summation also doesn't matter okay so this is how vector notation is now you might be thinking sir uh, center of mass of extended object see i have taken object like i have taken masses discrete masses these are called discrete masses okay these are discrete masses and you have like chosen a coordinate system according to that and then you have found out the position vectors of all of them and then you have calculated the center of mass position somewhere here maybe or oh, somewhere maybe here okay maybe somewhere here okay so that is what you have done so here so far we have taken as discrete masses but see if you have any object in in this uh, like real world if you take if you take a wheel wheel a iron beam like this okay iron bar or beam whatever you say so iron iron bar okay if you take anything in this world can you can you find out how many particles are there and can you find out positions of all of them is not possible so these are called actually continuous masses so these are called continuous object for which you cannot find out individual particles okay it is not possible to find out individual particle so rigid bodies rigid bodies actually are continuous rigid body rigid body has a continuous mass distribution continuous continuous as mass distribution so we have to take continuous mass distribution in that case okay continuous mass distribution how suppose i take a take a bar like this okay so this is bar i know the whole mass may be capital m but this mass has been distributed all over the rod okay this rod okay so in this case how to calculate how to calculate center of mass is better you have to actually again you have to consider this coordinate system suppose i take at the middle at the middle coordinate system i take the middle here this is origin suppose okay this is origin suppose this is y axis this is x axis so my center of mass coordinate should lie on the like anywhere on the object itself so y coordinate there will be no center of mass position okay so this is one dimensional object, object suppose but whatever it is it has continuous mass distribution you cannot find out m1 m2 m3 separately so what you have to do you know you have to in this case you have to consider small elements of mass okay small elements of mass like this okay small elements of masses okay like that you have to take a small elements which has certain thickness suppose dx okay and you have taken suppose at x distance away okay so you you have taken then uh, an element of an element element of mass dm it has mass dm okay and thickness thickness dx so where you have taken at x distance away distance away x distance away from the origin okay from the origin 
so in this case you know how to find out so you can see this 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 how do i how do i take this element this element you should think that that this if this particular element is continued to be piled up so you take small elements like a large number of small elements like this and then add them up you get this bar so you can think that the bar can be thought of such a thin elemental mass distribution having mass delta m and thickness dx which is situated at x distance away from the origin so in this case you can you can write the center mass coordinate cx cm can be written as c summation because i have to take many such elements many such elements then you can produce this whole bar okay so we are thinking basically that this bar of metal is made up of large number a large number of elemental elemental portions like this having thickness dx and mass dm so you have to write x dm divided by the total mass of this beam itself because you are taking dm1 plus dm2 you have to take various so x x psi dmi that means you have taken large number of see i goes from 1 to n you have to take large number of such elements to find out the uh, to make up this kind of rod i'll write it in a bigger font so that you can see it better c x m xm is summation over i goes from 1 to n then you have xi distance away what you have you have the elemental mass dmi okay so D, dmi element i have taken i have taken the coordinate of this from the origin as xi and divided by divided by the summation over delta mi that means i have taken see i i can take many such element similar thickness similar mass like that n numbers of that and all of them if you just add then you get the whole bar itself okay so this mass since this summation over mass will be the whole mass of the bar okay whole bar whole mass of the bar so this is how if you have a if you have suppose you have some object like this see rectangular uh, like rectangular uh plate kind of that okay rectangular plate it is actually a two-dimensional object so you can just do one thing what you can do is you can just uh okay so let us let us do one thing we can we can actually consider our coordinate axis through the through the center of this object itself okay through the center of this object then you can write see you can see when you calculate xcm center mass coordinate okay i would better take i'd better take the coordinate system at any end okay at any end so look this maybe the center of coordinate this is origin this is y this is x okay so it should go in the middle okay so i have not taken in that way anyway so what you can do when you calculate the x coordinate so what you know you have to xi dmi that means you have to take at x distance away you have to take so suppose this is the origin you have to take at x distance away you can take a strip like this elemental strip like this at x distance away and you have uh, x distance away and thickness will be actually dy thickness will be dy and in this case see in in the previous case actually i forgot to mention you so D, dm can be written as the length dx into lambda lambda is the mass per unit length see lambda is mass per unit length okay uh, dm is 
lambda is mass per unit length if you have the length of the whole bar is capital l and mass is capital m so lambda is the capital m by l in this case actually since, since it is two dimensional object this is a rectangular plate rectangular plate rectangular plate so in this case what you need to do you know you need to have a delta m max so mass it this mass actually is given by a uh, sigma into area sigma into area of the element sigma is the mass per unit area so sigma will be mass per unit area mass is capital mass m suppose total uh, suppose this has a this has b length is a and breadth is b so a into b will be the area of the rectangle right so so this will give you the mass of this rectangle sorry uh, this is a sigma mass per unit area mass per unit area this is called surface mass density mass per unit area unit area okay so you have to write here divided by capital m so this xm will be xm is so this is from x i so this is x i and thickness is d why so dm will be here you know you have to write when you just go for the calculation part then xi dmi will be actually sigma into dx and dy because the area of this strip is, is this only right okay and divided by this okay so this is how you can do it for see the y coordinate you can take see y coordinate you have to take uh, oh i'm sorry actually in this case whatever i have shown it is actually y coordinate okay this is y coordinate i have shown here okay this is y coordinate it will be this one at a distance so if i want to write x coordinate okay x coordinate you have to take in this way you have to take a strip like this at x distance this is at xi distance and this has thickness dy okay dy thickness like that okay so the for y coordinate actually you have to take like this strip like this having d uh see this is up to y okay this is up to y and has certain thickness dx okay so that you can take dy and dx anyway so this is how you have to find out the coordinates okay so in this case i can write this as see so y i d m i divided by this okay one more thing is see this is even see for extended object when you cannot calculate like coordinates of each mass see if this dx so dx thickness is actually tending to zero limit then this summation actually can be converted to integration see i am writing this xcm what we have written is axi dmi divided by capital m so when your dx the elemental this thing a thickness of the element tending to zero that means you are taking this much element so if these elements are making very very thin so the whole thing will be actually taken as a continuous mass distribution and this continuous mass distribution so at this limit the summation actually as you know from calculus the summation can be converted to integration term xi dmi divided by capital m okay sorry here i since no, uh, summation is not there so you should not write i x d m and here you have to take the limit from which portion to which you are taking so suppose i was taking for a rectangle so rectangle c x starts from here if your coordinate axis is this so x will be 0 to a 
okay and y will be 0 to b 0 to b okay so here it will be 0 to a x coordinate 0 to a and here y can be written as 1 over m integration y dm and here integration y limit goes from a to 0 to b okay so this is how uh, you can write in terms of integration in terms of integration okay so i have taken a lot of time to like develop the theory itself now what i'll do i'll show you for symmetric object like this see a bar whatever i was talking about since it is a symmetric symmetric object in the sense mass is distributed <coughs> distributed distributed uniformly uniformly over the space over the space of the object huh? sorry see this is the uniform bar uniform bar is actually having uniform metal bars so in this case you know you can you can take delta m as i said mass distribution of some thickness x here so on the both side actually you can take like that you can take uniformly and you know when you have say like uniform mass distribution the center of mass center of mass of objects having uniform mass distribution mass distribution mass distribution is situated at the geometrical center of the object at the geometrical center geometrical metrical center geometrical center of the object okay you have to remember this whenever you have uniform mass distribution center of mass will be always at the center of that mass distribution okay i'll show you a few examples Okay, I hope I have here. Yes, I have here. Look, I have a square. It has actually, if you have a square plate, mass is actually distributed all over the square plate uniformly. Then see the center of the square will give you the center of mass. This is actually CM, center of mass. If you have a rectangle with uniform mass distribution, so objects, objects having uniform having uniform mass distribution and obviously object has to be symmetric objects okay symmetric objects having uniform mass distribution distribution has cm situated at the geometrical center geometrical center geometrical center okay geometrical center so you look this is a this you can think of a sphere also or maybe circle circular plate also or disc also since the mass is actually distributed uniformly and see symmetric this object see this part is symmetric to this part or this part or this part whatever you take so all the parts are actually symmetric to each other in this case also look this part is symmetric to this part this part is symmetric to this part okay so they have uniform mass distribution all over so that's why the center of mass will be at the geometrical centers like see see this is a cylinder this is triangle and see in the in these cases all of them has uniform mass distribution okay okay all of them have uniform mass distribution 
distribution that's why the center mass is at the center uh, geometrical center of the object itself okay all right so i'll just take up at least one or two examples how to calculate center of mass for some typical systems like i have a system here suppose i have a system uh center of mass coordinate you have to find out for a hemispherical object see how hemispherical objects are looking like see hemisphere will be a bowl okay kind of a bowl like this hemisphere okay for for our numerical purpose just i have taken this uh, diagram look in this case how to find out the center of mass of this hemispherical object hemispherical object this is a solid hemispherical object suppose solid hemisphere hemisphere then first of all what you have to take is rho let us say rho is the mass density mass density means what if you want to get the total mass of any part of this any small part of any uh, like any elemental part of this hemisphere then you can write the volume and multiply with this mass this density this is actually volume density volume density volume density okay volume density so you want to get total mass of any portion of this so you have to write rho into dv okay this is how you have to write okay now let us say uh this center of mass coordinate see what we are doing we are just taking the coordinate axis through the center say if you would have if you would have had this whole sphere so this is the center through the center okay and i'm taking the origin to be the center of mass origin to be the center of mass i'm taking this origin is the center of mass okay i'm taking origin to be the center of mass of this hemisphere and see this is my so origin y if this is y axis this is z axis so this is a this is actually kind of two dimensional object if you see or if you take a solid one then it is actually three dimension if you take a kind of disc then it is two dimension but it is not a disc it is a hemisphere so it has actually center of mass has three coordinates xcm ycm and zcm okay there are three coordinates of this hemisphere but look here i am not taking the z axis i am not showing the z axis this here maybe z axis in this way the see this object is actually situated in such a way or we have taken the coordinate system in such a way that center of mass of the uh center of mass of this object is at the origin here so when it is like this and look now the mass is actually distributed uh like over like in the in the kind of y direction okay and say other two coordinates see x coordinate see already the center of mass is situated on the x x axis so that means xcm will be zero xcm will be zero already similarly this center of mass coordinate is situated on the x axis so y coordinate also will be zero sorry z coordinate will be also zero now the mass is distributed over the y direction you look here in this figure so what we can do is we can take an element c i can write xm here i have to write y coordinate we have got that y as z and x coordinate is zero for this because uh this center of mass coordinate is actually situated on the x axis so your x coordinate is zero and also the symmetry according to the symmetry of this object z coordinate also will be zero 
so symmetry of the object is such that only the y coordinate will be there so y cm you have to write how you can write this is 1 over m this is y into dm this is all you have to do see what we have to do we have to calculate this thing okay other things are zero zero to do that what you have to do you have to consider see any sphere sphere a solid sphere a solid sphere can be considered considered to be made up of to be made of made up of a large number of large number of disk okay large number of disks okay if that is the case then i can think of an elemental disk see here i have taken an elemental disk having radius y here okay so having a radius sorry x having radius x so this is this is suppose this uh this this one is the disk this is the disk okay kind of disk is this one okay i have taken a disk of radius a an elemental disk or elemental disk okay elemental disk because a sphere a sphere can be considered of solid sphere obviously can be considered to be made up of, of a large number of disk i am taking an elemental elemental disk of radius x see the radius is this one okay i'll just clean this portion okay so x radius x and this disk has thickness disk means you know you have circular portion like this okay and also some thickness will be there this is actually a disk okay disk like this so it has some thickness so you have x okay x is the coordinate like this i'm uh, sorry a radius and dx is the thickness okay dx is the thickness here in this case dy is the thickness dy so in the other actually thickness in the other coordinate so thickness is along the y direction and radius is actually along the x direction okay that means it is lying on the xy plane okay so your y coordinate through this y and this is x coordinate okay so you have considered an elemental disk and if you take many such like disk like this okay then you get the whole sphere okay so suppose the radius see as you see here radius of this hemisphere or sphere is capital r so what we can do is here you know i can find out what is dm first see i'll remove some of the things here i'll clean this portion so that you can see my writing clearly so i have taken an elemental disk of radius x and then thickness dx so see this is actually uh, mass density so we have to first find out what is dm dm will be actually given as see disk means you have two two radius okay two radius so okay let us let us do one thing uh we can write pi x square into dx see pi x square into d sorry this is thickness is dy 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 pi x square into dy but what is this x square can you find out what is x square so we have dy anyway we have to do integration over here integration with respect to dy so if i put here d in place of dm as 
i x square into dy is the thickness into rho this is that mass elemental mass so what you have to do we have to find out what is elemental mass and then i know the y coordinate then we can integrate it and find out and with the proper limit obviously so y has got a limit from 0 to capital r so that we can write later so we have to find out what is x so this x can be converted in terms of y and this r see if i take this as a right angle triangle kind of this okay this one from pythagoras rule i can write see r square will be is equal to y square plus x square okay so from here x square can be written as r square minus o r square okay so this is what we can write so i can write dm is equal to x square we have got this one so pi into r square minus y square into dy into rho so all the things are in terms of y so look this coordinate then i can write so this is y coordinate obviously x and z are zero we have found out that so y cm is equal to one over m m is the total mass of the hemisphere and this is c we have to take integration see we are doing integration in terms of y so y goes from 0 to r even x also can go go from 0 to r so yeah so from here pi see y is already there y is already there then i am writing the value of dm so pi r square minus y square into dy into rho so if we do this integration look pi rho by capital m m is the total mass of the hemisphere and this 0 to r and see here you have r square y into y cube then you have to do integration with respect to y okay so if you do the integration look what you get and put the put the limit if you do it you will get it see here will be uh, y square by 2 so if you put r upper limit so you will get r to the power 4 by 2 and for this you will get r to the power 4 by 4 r to the power 4 by 4 so if you do the simplification what you get i'll write it here okay i'll write it here So you get um, YCM like pi rho by capital M into so this. If you just simplify this, you will get r to the power 4 by 4. Now look, what is this mass? This is actually half of the mass of a sphere. So what is the density of the sphere? This is rho. So it will be uh, rho into 2 by 3. Okay. Uh, I'm, uh, four, 4 by 3 so we, we know 4 by 3 into pi r cube okay so this is half of that so 2 by 3 this is the volume right this is the volume so if we put this capital M over here so pi rho is already there and then you have to write the 2 pi rho r cube 3 goes up okay i'm just putting this capital m over here and see you have r to the power 4 over up and then uh, like in the numerator and 4 down so rho pi rho pi rho goes off one so r3 goes up with one so here you have three also here so you get look what you get 3 r by 8 okay 3 r by 8 so what is the YCM coordinate then I'll clean everything and write see what we have got doing all this see what we have done we have done this Y DM we have written so what we have got I'll write for this first 3 R by 8 we have got and what we have got for XM because it is on the x-axis 
so it will be zero and by symmetry of the object we like symmetry of this hemisphere because see it is on the like on the x axis or y axis itself so this is zcm will be also zero so you get the coordinate of the center of mass as 0 3r by 8 and 0 so this is how you get the center of mass coordinate okay for this hemisphere i'll just brief it out a little bit so what we have done this this integration we had to do so see what we had done we had just taken a an element at y distance away so y was there so i had to write the dm dm is rho into dv dv is actually here here pi x square into dy okay and x square we have found out from here as c r square minus y square into dy like this so this was the elementary mass we put it here and then we had done integration and we had taken the proper limit y has a limit from 0 to r okay so this is what we had done and by doing that we have got the center of mass for this hemispherical like uh, hemispherical object okay so deepa uh, so do you understand what i had discussed at least this center of mass of a sphere okay next day what we'll do first we'll take up two or uh, two more examples like this so that you can understand how to calculate center of masses uh, for this kind of object We'll take up typical some typical uh, objects for that like cone solid cone right circular cone and uh, maybe some more things we will take up so that you can understand how to calculate center of mass okay so yeah so we'll stop it here if you don't have any doubt already we are like uh, we exit maybe some three four minutes and if you have any doubt, you can ask me now, Deepa. Do you have any doubt? Okay. Okay, you don't have any doubt. All right. We'll stop it here then. We'll meet again on uh, Tuesday with this topic. Okay. So bye for today. Thank you, sir.